My deepest condolences to you and to your community for the loss of those 11 lives. Can you take me inside uh, your heart and your head when you learned about this shooting? It has been a horrific 24 hours. Uh, I woke up yesterday morning learning about a gunman who shot 10 people dead and wounded 10 others. Now that number has increased to 11. But what was even more terrifying for the community was that the shooter was active and they didn't know whether they should go to events or not, whether the shooter might just come in and do this to them. Mm. So uh, we were urging them to continue on with their lives and continue on to these Lunar New Year celebrations, uh, continue to send their kids to the schools. Uh, but you could see the fear in their eyes. So it wasn't until 5 p.m. Uh, when Sheriff Luna uh, announced that the suspect had indeed been caught and that he uh, committed suicide in that white cargo van, um, that our community could feel relieved at not being threatened by a shooter. But now yeah. we are in this period of of recovery, mm. of healing. And I'm hearing the stories about the victims. In fact, I just came from uh, the crisis center, which is uh, helping the victims and doing those legal notifications. Uh, there is going to be so much involved in their recovery. And some of the victims that are in the hospitals yeah. are really have, having a time with it. In fact, seven are still in hospitals and some are incubated. Well, I know you will continue to stay close with those families. I understand you spoke with President Biden as well. Can you characterize that conversation? Did you ask him for anything specifically for your community? And what did he say to you? I spoke to President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. President Biden and Vice President Harris expressed their deep condolences and they wanted to make sure that the community knows that they have been been thinking about us, but also they provided all kinds of federal resources. In fact, I just have to say that uh, the federal resources such as the FBI, ATF, and all kinds of agencies were there in force yesterday helping us to yeah. capture the suspect. And um, they want to condolences to the victims as well. Congressman, I know you have called for uh, expanded background checks. You've called for stiffer gun legislation. Is this a moment where you will revive the push for that? Or given the fact that uh, Washington is now divided, do you think that this is a moment where that can't happen? We have to continue to raise our voices. I, of course, have a greater reason to raise my voice, but, um, you know, we cannot stop. We know that uh, it is a tough road in this Congress, but we need everybody's help to tell their representatives if they are reluctant to vote for such things, this kind of mass shooting could happen in their communities. It could happen to their constituents. It could happen to their family and to their loved ones. Uh, and if we want to make sure that everybody yeah. is safe at, and that everybody can be at peace, then we have to stop this proliferation of gun violence. Yeah. Congresswoman Judy Chu, our condolences again. Thank you for joining us. Our thoughts will be with you and your community. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.